In my last two videos on special design, I covered two different kinds of specials that fit the same archetype, and talked about why one fit good design, and one fit bad design. But today, we're going to be covering three poorly designed specials, two of which had a big issue that Nintendo wasn't able to fix throughout all their history of patches, but one of which is a completely different beast. It's a special that is so bad, Nintendo stopped adding weapons with it six months in, a design so horrible that it's their biggest failure, something they've already replaced for Splatoon 3. But hey, before we get into it, if you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to subscribe in order to show your support. It helps me out when producing a lot of content for Splatoon 3 and Splatoon 2. Let's get into it. The first special up is Splashdown. This is the one everyone probably saw coming in this video, but maybe not for the reason you expected. Splashdown, yes, is a panic button, but it's actually not a bad one. It's weak enough to the point where it's intended to be a mix-up option. You can potentially splash down into the sky, but the opponents can also react and punish it. Splashdown weapons tend to have lower points for specials, most of them around 150 to 170. This is something that we haven't really seen Nintendo try before. It's a weaker special that you can get more often. It's more akin to an ability in another game than a special weapon. So on paper, the concept seems pretty cool, but unfortunately it falls apart for one simple reason. Splashdown is really, really easy to kill, especially at higher levels. Now, don't get me wrong, really low ranks may struggle with this, but at the higher ranks, especially those who put in the time to learn the height of Splashdown, can punish it incredibly easily. Top 500 Splashdowns almost never work, and in competitive play at top level, splashdowns are basically a death sentence. So instead of being a weaker mix-up option, it's just something that gets you killed. This is actually a relatively simple problem to fix. If splashdown is too easy to punish, then you want to give the splashdown user a bit more options as it is a mix-up. Something like changing the height you go by holding down the special stick is a simple one, or a bit more complicated could be healing you once you land the splashdown since if you take in most of your damage, every slosher besides Blob, every blaster, and any weapon with a burst bomb can just easily finish you off. However, the main issue with the special comes from Nintendo's lack of action, as it seems they gave up on buffing the special a long time ago. Patch 1.3 was a great start to buffing the special. The first change was that they decreased the amount of time it remained in the air by 10 60ths of a second, or 10 frames. And the second change is that they increased the height Splashdown went by 31%. In the early days of Splatoon 2, Splashdown barely lifted off the ground. So these were great changes, and the special would be in an utterly terrible state without them. However, despite receiving over three times the buffs between all patches after that, I would argue that those remaining buffs were almost insignificant compared to the buffs it got in 1.3. Why is that? because none of these buffs actually helped with the core problem. The only one that even slightly came close to the mark was decreasing the amount of points for special you lost when you died in the air from 50 to 25%. This patch change in 4.1 clearly showed that Nintendo knew the main problem with Splashdown was landing with it, but they just didn't care. All of the other patch changes were due to aspects of landing the splashdown, being buffed, which was never the actual problem with it. As such, most of these changes, while somewhat helpful, fell completely flat, leading to splashdown still being the worst special in the game two years later. The only possible argument I can see against buffing it in this way is that it would hurt lower level play where splashdown is really good, but I would counter that with, when are lower level players in C and B rank trying to cancel Splashdown? They probably wouldn't even notice these buffs even happened. It's impossible to tell if Splashdown could have worked as a special concept. The idea of a weaker special that's more of a mix-up that you could get more often was a really cool concept. But unfortunately, after 1.3, it seemed Nintendo gave up on really trying to reach its full potential. As such, the special is now a complete burden to any weapon that has it. A sad fate for what was one of the coolest looking specials in the trailer. 
However, it doesn't have to be a completely new type of special in order for Nintendo to mess up an aspect of it. The next special I want to talk about is Bubble Blower, and you might be surprised to hear Bubble Blower on this list. After all, it seems like a fairly good special, and well, that's because it is. The actual concept of launching three bubbles that you can control the health in in order to help protect you, move objective, stall an area, or anything like that is actually really unique, and it's the only special that isn't seemingly ported from a Splatoon 1 special but changed to be weaker, which is really neat. However, you can throw all of that out of the way if your weapon has a splat bomb, suction bomb, or torpedo, forget using your bubbles in any sort of strategical and unique way. Instead, we're just going to make it a giant insta-kill explosion that's impossible to react to in a lot of situations. This is the Bubble Blower's Bomb combo, which you can do by throwing a bomb, launching your first bubble, launching the second bubble, and then throwing your bomb at the first bubble. The only thing this combo requires is Object Shredder, because the third bubble can be comboed with by doing a bomb and a shot, in whatever order you want on the third explosion, which requires Object Shredder in order to break in one shot, which is kind of irrelevant. Every Bubble Blower weapon will run Object Shredder without really caring that much. Why is this combo so good? Because the explosion that comes out of two bubbles is actually huge, but even more than that, it's almost impossible to counter, even though you can react to, because you can't swim away far enough in a lot of situations, but shooting at the bubble doesn't do anything either. Because the damage mostly comes from two bombs on the first bubble, and the second bubble is being launched in front of it, that second bubble is going to be eating all the damage and still be able to explode. You can even tank multiple suction bombs and still get the combo off, which is just flat out unfair. While there definitely can be arguments made on how good this combo is or isn't, at the end of the day it's a drastic change from what the special was supposed to be, a strategical use of bubbles to keep yourself alive or stall an area, that has changed into a much more simple explosion that isn't really objectively fun to play against. Like with Splashdown, Nintendo only really made one attempt to actually fix this problem, which is that they reduced the size of the first and second bubbles in patch 5.2. It took them until the third most recent patch to even attempt to fix the problem, and again, it ignores the issue. The bubble combo can still happen, and the explosion size of special power-up is basically the same. In other words, people are still going to be abusing this broken combo. The special is no longer being used strategically by any weapon with these bombs in 90% of situations. Oh, did I mention if you have torpedo, you can blow up every single bubble by just locking the torpedo on someone? You know, in case you wanted three instant explosions, though they are a little smaller. I don't even need to spend a lot of time on a potential solution to this, just make it so you can't use bombs until you've launched all three of your bubbles and suddenly the bubble combo requires a second teammate, making it way more strategical, something the special was originally supposed to be. Technically, with Splashdown and Bubble Blower, there's salvageable special ideas there where both of them can function. Bubble Blower is a mostly good special with a different use of it that undermines what it's supposed to be, and Splashdown is a unique idea that has one weakness that has not been fixed. This special's design was broken from the start of the game to where it is now, and this is Stingray. Now, I want to do a quick note before I get into the history of the special and what makes it so bad. A lot of Charger players really like Stingray, and I understand where they're coming from here. If you want a more complex special, then Stingray is your only option. In the first game, E-Leader had Echo Locator, which was an instant use special that did itself, or Kraken, which was a short range panic button, while the regular kits had Killer Whale and Echo Locator, two simple specials, and Splat Bomb Rush, which was the least most common kit. In this game, E-Leader has Ink Storm, another simple use special, Bubble Blower, which is something it can't really do anything with and is honestly a really bad kit for it, unfortunately, while the regular kits have Bomb Rush, which is slightly complex but not amazingly, and Baller, which is the panic button option except in this game it doesn't work for it at all. Frontliners have always had the privilege of having specials like Inkjet, Hammer, and Inkzuka in the first game that were more complex to use, 
while backliners, especially Charger players, never really had a special like that. Stingray was Nintendo's first attempt at a complex special for backliners, so I can totally understand why backliners enjoy using a special that requires more effort. With that out of the way, Stingray is a really complicated special to talk about. So, to go over this, I'm going to give a lot of examples, but I think a great place to start is with Stingray's patch history. A lot of people nowadays don't know this, but Stingray used to be bad. Really bad. It was by far the worst special in the game, and this was because of three main reasons. In its original state, you couldn't swim out of Stingray, meaning you were more easily punished. Secondly, when launching the beam, you couldn't stop launching it, which is what allows you to see people through walls and reposition your aim. But finally, one change that was added in 1.3 changed everything. The most drastic thing Nintendo has ever done in the form of a buff. In patch 1.3, Stingray got shockwaves. Yep, that's right. Before 1.3, Stingray didn't have any shockwaves. It was just the one beam. In one patch, Stingray went from arguably the worst special in the game to by far the best, and the patch changes that have happened since, well, they speak for themselves. I mean, just look at the amount of nerfs over so many patches. The damage was nerfed, twice. The duration was nerfed, twice. You had special power-up effect, being nerfed, and other specials such as Ink Armor and Baller were buffed to be stronger against it. Hell, before 3.0, you could safely use Stingray within your spawn barrier without being pushed out, meaning if you were on Tower or Rainmaker and you had a ray pointed at you, well, you had no chance of that ray being stopped anytime soon. As you can see, Stingray had a pretty flawed development history. So let's go over some of its problems today. As I mentioned before, Stingraying the Tower or Rainmaker was really effective since you could do it from your spawn region, which in some maps is almost impossible to get to. But why is it so good? I mean, Killer Whale could be launched on Tower in the first game, and Booyah Bomb could do the same thing. What makes Stingray so different? Well, it's the duration. Ray and Booyah Bomb only last a couple of seconds. You can get off the Tower and get right back on and be fine. But as you'll see, even with ink armor, I still can't get off the tower and get back on before the timer in overtime completely runs out. And well, if you're the glowing, located Rainmaker user with a debuff to your swim speed and no ability to get armor, well, you probably already know what happens. Even with the nerfs to its duration and damage, it's still pretty much impossible to live against a good Ray user on the Tower or Rainmaker. Tower is somewhat salvageable because of Booyah Bomb, which is basically the only thing that can give you enough HP while allowing you to quickly retouch Tower, or by having multiple people go on with armor. However, these are highly coordinated strategies, which are really unfair to solo queue players who aren't really able to pull them off as easily. As such, good Ray players in TC Rainmaker Solo can often end games really easily. While yes, Ray is killable, on some maps, spawn is so impossible to reach that it might as well not be stoppable at all. Even with objective aside, Stingray is really good at forcing defensive specials or for people to move if the user is good enough. Custom Jet Squelcher is a super popular meta weapon because it can get Ray so often that it can be spammed to allow teams to move in, or to burn specials like Ink Armor early. Because of how safe Ray can be used, it feels incredibly unfair to fight against. Unlike specials like Inkjet and Ultra Stamp, which have clear vulnerabilities that can be punished, Stingray in a lot of situations doesn't have any way to be stopped. Ultimately, if I had to use one word to describe why Stingray is annoying and a bad design special, it's counterplay. Other specials in this game that are complex often have different options in terms of what you can deal with it, especially complex specials like Inkjet and Ultra Stamp, which have a lot of ways of countering them and downsides, such as the Inkjet's bigger hitbox and recall, and the Ultra Stamp being vulnerable from the sides and back. Stingray's vulnerability is almost non-existent, which is why it feels so unfair to play against. There isn't that much you can do on your side to stop the user, really just to survive. On the 20th of January 2018, the 52 Gal Deco was released. 
this would be the last DLC kit to ever get Stingray. None of the new weapons or the new kits, including the Kenta Collection and Sheldon's Picks, would ever get Stingray again. The special was abandoned to be put on any new weapons just six months into release. On February 17th, 2021, Splatoon 3 was officially announced. In the trailer, there is a new special, lasers being launched from speakers that look eerily similar to Killer Whale. While we don't know the specifics, they appear to launch in a set trajectory, maybe homing in on targets a little bit, but we do know that the player no longer controls them and they have a very short duration. So that means there should be two speakers floating that are not currently shooting. And what do you see right down here? <laughs> I did not notice these until recently. Two little floating purple and black dots. There's very few pixels. It's hard to tell what they are. But there's definitely something there. Go again. Now, these are very small. I could expect that could take up that much room on my screen. As can be seen by a few pixels on the trailer, they are clearly launched by speakers that are deployed. This is Stingray's replacement. The special isn't coming back. I do believe that Stingray was Nintendo's attempt at creating a complex special for backlines. While it failed and is almost certainly being replaced, Nintendo is back to the drawing board, and we may see something much better for the third game. But as for Stingray, it will forever be Nintendo's worst design special.